I joined politics because I decided that it wasn't just enough to criticize government without actually trying to play a role. It is the right moment in Africa for young people to stand up and do those things which count, those things which matter. Why I decided to join this? Because I, I, me personally, I saw how systematically young people have been isolated. Yes, I would definitely love to run for office. I believe that uh, I have the leadership requisite skills to be able to champion the cause of young people. I'm a young person, I have the energy, I have the skill, I have the expertise, and I believe that I can definitely engage with peers at my level to be able to interrogate all the issues that are concerned within our government. Mm -hmm. So I, I decided that although a lot of people tend to believe that there's a certain age that you should become politically active, for me I wasn't going to let that apply to me. I felt that as long as I believed that I could contribute something to my country, to my system, to try to make things better in one way or the other, then there was really no need for me to stay out of the political process. Of course I began with civil society, I, I was part of a couple of youth uh, organizations, NGOs, trying to create change in one way or the other. But one thing that struck me was that there's a limit to what I can do as an individual or through an NGO and having the power of the constitution, so to speak, behind me would enable me to do a lot more for my people, irrespective of how and where I choose to serve. So now that um, I work in the House of Representatives, it's given me a broader understanding of how the legislative process works. I also hope to be a legislator someday. Uh, and yes, I want to start with the House of Representatives. So it's like me getting an insight into where I hope to be in a couple of years, God willing. The decisions that our leaders make will affect our futures, whether or not we like it. So we cannot continue to say that because we don't like this party or we don't like this elder or because you think politics is this or politics is that. You cannot continue to leave the responsibility of making decisions that affect your future solely to people who will not be part of that future. They're too old, they're out of this generation. The decisions they make today are going to affect us for 20, 30, 40, 60 years to come. They're going to affect our children. So even if you don't care much about yourself, think about the children you're going to have and the kind of world you want to bring them into. It is very, very important to join politics because that's how you get to influence things. If you have an issue with something around you, maybe there's a societal problem that you would like to solve. Occupying elective office or even serving in some capacity in government gives you a kind of power that just talking about it or trying to act in an individual capacity does not. I think that if we have to engage um, effectively, we need to engage the political society as well. And I think this is one of the objectives of the African Movement for Democracy, trying to bridge the gaps that exist between uh, civil society and political society, which actually we know is a, problem, a problematic area because um, you know, the way political society tends to view civil society, especially those that receive support from abroad, uh, they tend to view us sometimes as pursuing a, a neo-colonial agenda, you know, within these countries, trying to destabilize them. And I think it's, it ought not to be so. I think the joy of democracy is to have the possibility for different people to express themselves and to have these, you know, various perspectives that are really um, sort of going to contribute to, you know, uh, get everyone feel like they are included in the in the political system and that they are part of the development process and that's going to bring them. Uh, benefits as well. What we do basically in Kenya is uh, we're trying to build a culture whereby young people are valued uh, based on where they come from. We have different uh, ethnic backgrounds and, and uh, representation from different areas in the country. In democracy, what we're trying to do is uh, ensure these voices are heard, especially in decision-making processes and, uh, and in governance as well, uh, from the county level to the national level. 
at the county level we have uh, young issues of the young people being ironed out before it reaches at the national level. And uh, also representational in areas of representation. In political uh, arena, we've ensured that at least 30% of all positions that are being occupied by the leaders uh, goes, goes to the young people. Not only young people, even the people with disability. And that is one way we've ensured as a country we are going to advance democracy and we are going to value each and every voice in the entire country. Being a member of parliament, I'm still a young, still a youth. I've been joining myself in the youth caucus in the parliament. We have formed the youth caucus in the parliament. It's a joint program among the all political parties in the parliament, CCM, Chadema and CUF. Our work and our role is to make sure that those policies concerning the youth affairs uh, are just getting pushed, pushed up by us in the parliament uh, so that to get to be passed easier in the parliament. Also to sensitize and to mobilize our fellow MPs to initiate uh, special programs uh, to assist more youth to engage uh, in different activities. For instance, when we are making laws in the parliament, we must make sure that the youth get be involved to get their views, to get their opinions on how they want to be included in, in, in a foresight uh, bill. I had wanted to bring young people on board. I had always loved politics. I had wanted to change the political narrative in my country. Because ever since I was born, I've always seen the older folks, the older generation handling power. And I've not seen much improvement since we got independence in 1961. I've not seen much improvement under the older folks. So I, I lobbied with my colleagues. Well, sometimes in 2011, I was inspired. I said, oh, I will change this. I will do it. I will succeed. I was a bit younger. I was much, much more younger in 2011. When I decided to take the challenge, of course, it was not easy. Um, I fought to most of my friends, most of the young people as dream killers. Some of say, oh, it is not possible. You are too young. They will not support you. The worst of it, even my parents, they, were, they demotivated me because they think it was not possible. My mom had to tell me in my face that you should not contest. I challenged her. I said, I'm going to win. But let us educate ourselves, let us go through a lot of tutelage and let us persevere. If we have, for instance, 20 of us or 15 of us in the parliament as young people, I think we can make a change. As an organization, uh, how are we engaging young people and how we're working with other civil society? Well, there are various forums that we use. The first thing is that we lobby and engage with government. And one of the things that we're trying to bring back into our government or into our structures is actually revive the youth parliament, which had a natural death. But for some reason or the other, it hasn't been brought back. We felt that that was a space that young people had to articulate policy issues, to discuss leadership matters, to gain the necessary experience, but now it has been taken away from them. Then the second aspect is that civil society space, unfortunately, in Botswana is very limited and even in terms of resources. So we leverage on various international organizations as well as other local organizations that we foster collaboration with. We've realized that the use of social media has helped to help us to be able to reach out to young people out there. But more importantly, not disregarding the traditional means of reaching the masses, which is going back to those institutions, speaking to them in their villages, in their rural areas, because not everybody has access to a phone, not everybody has access to Facebook or Twitter or Instagram, you name it. So going back to the grassroots level is what we have realized is the best way to interact with young people in our countries, in their community hall, in their village wards. In Botswana, we have a system known as the Kotla, which is where the chief calls the people to talk about developments in the area. This is the cornerstone of democracy in our country. And this is the key forum that we use in order to engage young people concerning policies and development. Youth, 
youth in Uganda um, are at a very interesting point because Uganda is one of the most youthful countries in the world and the best example for youth participation has been around the last election that we had where young people divide the narrative that they were apathetic and not interested in politics. They came out in big numbers to vote and started a thing that they call protecting the vote where they'd stay in the vote um, and um, voting centers all night until the votes were counted. And more aggressively, young people have politicized Twitter as a tool and Facebook where they're using social media to question, to demand accountability and to demand more transparency from government. Um, and it's been very successful in Uganda in getting government to respond directly to issues that young people have. Unfortunately, of course, there's a backlash because government has three times already shut down social media uh, because of how powerful the tool has become for most young people. But young people are constantly innovating and finding ways around these barriers um, and had clearly learning that their voices can be heard if they use social media as a great tool. The governance spaces in Zimbabwe have been interestingly uh, evolving with people taking it to social media, people engaging in uh, hashtags, people also taking the government to court, for instance, where uh, the citizens are suing the government. For instance, I know uh, the group Tajamuka have taken the president of Zimbabwe to court through the constitution uh, process where they are suing him uh, for, first of all, uh, they are mentioning that he's too old to, to, to be president. Uh, number two, they are also questioning that his ministers who are engaging in, in, um, in um, the ministers who are engaging in corruption should be should be held accountable. Uh, thirdly, they're questioning the general uh, the general economic meltdown. So those are some of the things that people have begun to do in Zimbabwe, uh, especially the youths, uh, to make sure that uh, the government is accountable to its people. We think that the problems of Africa are two, in discipline and disorder. And you can't solve this without going back to the basics, going back to how people grow and become leaders in Africa. So our work is very simple. We go to schools, we have a curriculum for teaching leadership. We go to schools and we teach them, we teach young children how to be leaders so that when they grow up, they will learn to do the right thing. Now, why is this so important for the development of Africa? The biggest challenge in Africa, as President Ellen Johnson Sirleaf of Liberia said, is that Africa is not poor. Africa is poorly led. So if you want to talk about democracy in Africa, if you want to change Africa's story for the next 10, 20 years, you need to focus on leadership. And you need to focus on how leaders are being prepared to take up political office. And that is why we are interested in teaching young children how to be leaders. This, for us, is the number one problem of Africa. And if we can get the leadership story right, we can get development in Africa, uh, you know, spot on. Recently, one of the undertakings that we had was the Young African Thinkers Convention that we worked on um, in partnership with the AU, um, backed by also other um, funders. The main point behind it was to get the young people um, interested in politics and interested in, in what's going on in Africa, in their, in their countries, and to also see in how they can use their, their innovation, their creative ideas, and how to contribute that, basically. So we took um, the Agenda 2063 that the AU um, recently released at the 50th um, Jubilee of, of the organization of the AU and now um, the AU. Um, so that agenda is basically a vision for the next 50 years of Africa. What is Africa going to look like in 2063? And by then I'm going to be 70, in my 70s, so that actually concerns me, you know, it's going to be me and my children and uh, making that come to pass. So we believe that the, the button ne needed to be passed from um, from, you know, the older generation who's not actually going to be there when that comes to pass to us and see if we agree with everything that is written in there and then contribute on what is our role and our responsibility in making it come to pass.
So we're working on bringing um, youth leaders from different regions of the country to have them discuss about what is the Ethiopia and what is the Africa they wish to see. And the Ethiopia that I wish to see is a, a united, a peaceful and a growing Ethiopia. We are trying to build up a new generation of South Sudanese young people who will be able to, to foster a better country, free from tribalism, free from nepotism, and, I mean, and also free from uh, corruption. In a nutshell, uh, South Sudan is affected badly enough by the issue of tribal politics. You know, people, are, people form themselves into groups. For example, now we have the Nuer group, the Denka group, the other tribes groups. Yeah? They're all fighting for that seat, uh, for the presidency of the country. And, and the youth are not wise enough, uh, I mean, to avoid being uh, in such a mess. Instead, I mean, they are being promoted by, by, their, by, by their own politicians yeah, to fight for their interests. For example, I mean, I mean the newer politicians are investing in uh, newer young people, at least to carry arms and fight for them. Uh, I, mean, I, mean for the, I mean, for the, I mean for the newer leadership in the country. The Dinka is doing the same, and other, and, and, and other tribes are doing the same thing. Yeah. So, uh, seeing that such a mess uh, can spoil the country, for sure it's already spoiled the country, from what you can see now in South Sudan. Uh, my organization, the, the UN Association of South Sudan, uh, uh, is bringing together young people to, I mean, to, to form a model UN, you know, the, the issue of the model UN. So, it's to bring them together and discuss uh, issues of importance. Yeah? that they can learn to accept each other. They them not, I mean, based on tribal politics or tribal outlook. Yeah, we're South Sudanese, and uh, that should be our, 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 our working aim in the country. We decided to come up with an initiative to reach out to the public and making sure that they have access to constitutional resources online, wherever they are, young people, young women, whoever is online, they can have this access to, to, to constitutional resources. And for the first time, we set um, the first online public database on constitutional resources in Tanzania, where people can have free access of information anywhere, anytime, 24 hours. But that was not enough. Well, then we said, how can we reach people in the areas where they don't have access to internet, but also doesn't have access to travel to Dar es Salaam to access this online platform. So we, we came up with a campaign called Bing Bang Campaign, where we traveled all over the countries to meet with the people where they were. Collier have been able to lead a campaign back in Cameroon called the Vote 18 Campaign. This is actually an advocacy campaign which seeks at uh, requesting for the reduction of the voting age in Cameroon from 20 to from 20 years old to 18 years old. So far right now we are calling lobbying for the Vote 18 and we plead with all the, uh, every stakeholder to join us in this campaign to advocate for the reduction of the voting age in Cameroon from, 18, from 20 to 18 years old because we believe that youths who are the age of 18 are considered to be majority and are considered to be uh, mature enough to be able to take decisions in other African countries. Then even in Cameroon, they are mature enough to make decisions for who should be their political leaders. Over the past few years, we've been working and engaging young people in democratic and governance processes, engaging in constitution review and youth policy as well. Um, right now, we have a campaign which is at the Federal House of Representatives to lower the age for contesting elections. We have young people in Nigeria who work in elections in many different ways. Um, young people are electoral observers, they are security agents, they work as the media, um, they even campaign for other people, but however, they are not allowed to contest for elections. So what we're doing now, and it is called the Not Too Young to Run campaign. Um, it is a campaign to reduce the age for contesting elections. Um, we have young people in Nigeria that are engaging to ensure that 
Um, we have more inclusion, more participation in the democratic space. We have young people that are engaging and organizing debates and rallies and talking to their friends, talking to their legislators, engaging on social media. And this is a campaign that we're very confident about that would open up the space. We want more inclusion, we want more participation, and we want to bring in the energy, the resourcefulness, the innovation, the creativity of young people in our political space in Nigeria. What we do is, by focusing on young people between the ages of 18 and 35, we deepen democracy by strengthening the rules that are already in place in our constitution, by getting more people knowledgeable about what is the constitution, what does it mean to have political rights, what does it mean to vote, why is it important. So that's one of our first basis points. And at that point, we then go around and say, well, what do people know about voting? Right, do they know who their political parties are? Do they know what the political parties are advocating for? So one of the big things our organization does is that in a non-partisan manner, we give as many people information about political parties. Um, we're one of the few organizations in the country that will have every single, every single political party's manifesto online in a non-partisan manner, focusing on youth-centered issues on each manifesto so that people can freely look around these issues. Um, so how we mobilize people is actually quite interesting. We ask the simple question to ourselves is, we don't see young people as apathetic. Right? That's our basis point. We don't look at young people and say, young people don't know how to be politically active. Young people don't care about you know, the politics of the country. Young people really do care, but you're not interesting them in the right way. Would I run for president? Not too sure about that one. Why? Uh, not too sure if I really want to get gray hair at my young age. <laughs> to every young person out there who thinks they're too young to be in politics, I stand here to say that's not true. You're never too young or too old even to do anything that, is, that you set your heart to, as long as that's what you want to do. And we have a responsibility to make our countries and our continent and the world at large a better place. Hey, yeah.